We have a new chief diplomat, and his name is John Kerry, the former senator from Massachusetts and presidential candidate in 2004. What's on his to-do list, and how can he improve on the success of his previous Secretary of State? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Joining me is Republican strategist John Braybender and Democratic strategist Jimmy Williams. John, let me start off with you. Uh, he has a lot on his to-do list, meaning John Kerry. You talk about Israel. You talk about the Middle East, obviously, in Israel. You talk about the specific Pacific. Uh, where does he start? Well, I think... The problem is everything is on the table. He has problems in Syria. He has problems in uh, really stability in Egypt. He has Iran rapidly moving towards a nuclear bomb, the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict going on. And so he has to play three-dimensional chess. He cannot say, boom, 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 I'm going to do one after the other. I don't know how you do anything but always have in mind, first as a priority, stopping Iran from getting a nuclear bomb. That has to be priority number one on every occasion. Jimmy? I agree with John. It, that is the number one priority for the administration. Mm -hmm. The president also just announced yesterday that he will be going to Israel. Um, and so for Secretary, um, sec this is odd to say, Secretary of State Kerry, Kerry uh, I, I want to say Clinton, right? <laughs> um, but for uh, uh, Secretary Kerry, he will uh, be preparing for that and getting the president ready for that. And so um, for all the criticism that the president took in the first um, uh, administration, the first first administration for, for, quote, ignoring Israel, it looks like he's now uh, turning his focus directly to the Middle East. Um, most presidents in their second terms do focus on foreign affairs. Um, and so I, I, will, I, will, I would suggest that he will go that way. This Let's time. talk about that for a few moments. There was this perception, or is that this perception, that this president does not care about uh, Israel um, in the context of perhaps a George W. Bush or a Ronald Reagan or a Republican president. Is there any truth to that? Jimmy? I was in April. Um, I was in Israel in April of 2011, and um, I had more than one member of the Knesset say to me, "I said, why? I asked, why do you think that Barack Obama doesn't like Israel?" And they said, "He went to Egypt, and he didn't say in that speech that he gave in Egypt in the beginning of his administration, and he didn't say we, I love Israel." That was their main beef because he's. The president didn't say, I love a country that's not his own. I find that a little bit farcical, frankly. I, I, I think that what's happening here is the president has tough love for both sides. Um, and this is not tough love that we haven't seen before. He's just not Clinton as in Bill Clinton, zeroed in on the Middle East and, 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 and Israel-Palestinian peace talks like, like, a, like a bumblebee. George Bush did not do so much, nor has Barack Obama. I think it's unfair to say that. but. Again, he's made the announcement he's going there in a few months, so that's where he's turning his John, attention John, when you take to. a look at giants, if you will, the Secretary of State legacies, there's Dean Russ, there's Henry Kissinger and so forth. Do you believe that Hillary Clinton perhaps may be a giant uh, when history begins to write her legacy? Uh, no, for this reason. I mean, I think she got a lot of compliments and accolades, all that type of stuff, but all the problems were, are still there today as they were four years ago when she started. I mean, I would ask you a question, what is her big accomplishment? And most people would, would struggle with that. So I do think that part of that, too, is that we have a president that really didn't understand foreign policy. For somebody to tip off to the Russians in negotiations that they're going to be more flexible on missile defense and take that off the negotiating table, in a sense, was, was almost not just incompetence. It, it was something that uh, uh, put this country in a real bind. And, and uh, you know, I think a lot of it came from... Obama really doesn't understand foreign policy. Well, what John is saying is what a lot of Republicans whispered during the campaign was sure. that he's very naive uh, on foreign policy. We've got about 30 seconds left. Your response? I, I, I'm not sure that the world is any less safe of a place. America has not been attacked since 9-11. Um, in fact, if you want to go back and look at the, uh, the legacy when it comes to, quote, embassy bombings and all this uproar over Benghazi, from 2001 to 2009, there were 11 embassy bombing, bombings by al-Qaeda or its uh, affiliated terrorists during Bush's administration. No one had a hearing or worried about that, but Benghazi, of course, the world is, the sky is falling. I find it All remarkably right. hard to believe that the president of the United States is naive on foreign policy. Jimmy Williams so. and John Brabender, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care.